Um, hi. All right, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. Y'all, we are gathered here today <laughs> to talk about Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings. This is the second book in the Magnolia Parks universe and I just need to let you guys know right now that this series just positively has me by the throat. Like I have come on this channel. I have talked about a whole lot of books over the last couple of years. I have obsessed over a whole lot of books. I have advocated for them, recommended them, been so hardcore like this is the best thing I've ever read. And look, I stand by all of those books. I mean it, but like this series is just a masterpiece. Like it makes my chest physically hurt how obsessed I am with this world, with this series, with these characters. Like I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm having dreams about it. I'm finding myself in my head, in my own like internal monologue, speaking in the way that like Jessa Hastings writes, which is not a way that I think or a way that I speak or a way that I write. It's something all its own and something I've never experienced. It is so unique and beautiful and poetic and just like, quirky is not the right word, but it's just like, she has a way of saying so much while also like saying so little, like it's just, I, I don't even know how to explain it. She just has a way with words that is nothing like I have ever read and is just like everything my heart ever wanted or needed. Like this series is wild and crazy. There's so many moving parts. There's so much going on. This is the second book in the series and I just wanna say right off the bat in this video, it's going to be very hard to talk about this book. I mean, essentially impossible. Without spoiling Magnolia Parks, I didn't really know anything about this series going in. I didn't know what to expect. I knew that Magnolia Parks was a girl. I figured Daisy Hates was another girl. So I'm like, okay, this is gonna be like a companion novel series. Maybe these are like standalones and you can read, you know, one or the other, read them separately. But after reading Daisy Hates, I can tell you like that is not the case. If you have not yet read Magnolia Parks and you try to go into this, I think you're gonna be very confused. Like there are a lot of moving parts to this series, a lot of characters, a lot of things going on. And this book actually takes place at the exact same time that this book takes place. It's like the same timeline, which I don't love when an author usually writes like a book and then writes another book that's just like from another person's perspective. But this is very different from that because Daisy Hates is barely in Magnolia Parks. Like we do see her a couple of times. So there are a few scenes in this book that do overlap that you know you saw in this book, but now you're seeing from a different perspective, but it is done so well. And the way that she was able to like weave these stories together where after reading this, it's like puzzle pieces from this that were missing just like make sense and it all just like works and comes together so beautifully. And like as the character builds, as you meet them, like as you now see things from other people's perspectives, like it is just, an absolute work of art. But yeah, I hope you guys are prepared that like this is the only thing I'm gonna be talking about for the next year. Like I'm going to bring up this book in like every video, every recommendation video, every single freaking monthly wrap up. I just feel like everything I read from here on out is going to be compared to this and I just simply can't help it. So I apologize in advance, but yeah. If you haven't yet started this series, um, you're gonna need to not watch this video. I'll just briefly give you an overview right now. Um, this series pretty much follows this group of friends, this group of people that live in London's high society. Like the main story is focused on this group of friends that all went to this boarding school together. It is very much Gossip Girl-esque. Like all these kids are super rich. Like their parents are very important people. Like music producers or like they work in the entertainment industry or just like big business moguls. Like they've got the big, big, big bucks and they are like socialites in this society. People know who they are. They're honestly kind of like celebrities, like the tabloids report on them. Like they are just like these posh little bougie kids wearing their fancy designer clothes, living their life, going to clubs, like just dealing with so much drama. So much happens. There's so many, inner workings to this story, so many different like relationships and friendships and things that cross paths and overlap. And Magnolia Parks is like the main girl it focuses on and um, that's who we see in this story and her relationship with this guy named BJ and just a whole lot of other people and things. But then Daisy Hates is another character that is within this same sort of world but in a very different sort of capacity. Like she's friends with all these people but a lot of these people are 
you know, kind of famous and rich because their parents are like, you know, in business or in entertainment or whatever, where Daisy hates his family is like the biggest crime family in England and kind of the whole world. Like her family is known for doing a lot of things. They're basically like in the mafia for lack of better terms, but um, they're really known for being like notorious art thieves. Like they steal these like super old historic gajillion dollar art pieces. And so she's just been in this life from a very young age. Like her parents were literally killed like right in front of her when she was a little kid. And her brother Julian has raised her ever since. And Julian is a character we actually got a look at at the very end of Magnolia Parks. And I'll dive into this more later, but all of this is to say this story happens in the same timeline, but it is now focused on Daisy Hates. Part of the story is told from her perspective, but it's also told from this boy Christian's perspective, who she's currently having like a friends with benefits sort of relationship with. And Christian is someone that we meet in this book because he is very much a part of Magnolia Parks' friend group and her life and things going on with her. And he's also like in this like sort of relationship with Daisy and his family is kind of involved in this whole crime world as well. Like he is kind of like the bridge between these two friend groups and it just it works so well but we see his perspective in the story and then we also see julian's perspective like i said who is daisy's older brother and kind of like the leader of this whole like crime ring situation and um oh my god it's like this story was so different from magnolia's like daisy and magnolia live very different lives i mean both of them and their characters are just like beautiful girls that just like know how to work a room. They draw the attention of a whole lot of boys. They are confident and snarky and just like know their worth and know what they want and won't take no for an answer. Like they're very similar in that way, but they're also just so different because like Magnolia has had like a super privileged life her entire life and never really had to worry about anything where Daisy has had to constantly worry about everything. Like literally has to worry about like if she's going to get killed on the street every single day when she walks outside like her family has a whole lot of enemies and her being you know a young woman like she is often a target for her family's enemies so she has to literally go everywhere with a bodyguard and people are always watching her and she literally can't even order like the same food at a restaurant more than once or take the same way home every single day because someone might just like try to kill her so it's so interesting seeing like a very different person and like their life within the same sort of world. And um, Daisy is so funny. It's like kind of every character within this series, to be honest, is someone that you like love at times, but also like hate at times. Like, I don't know how Jessa Hastings did it, but like I had never adored and also wanted to slap so many characters at the same time. Like usually there's one character like that in a series where you're like, eh, like I have a love-hate relationship with you. Like, I'm not sure. Like I love you sometimes, but I hate you other times. That is everyone in this series. Like at some point you just like want to squeeze them and hug them and just like love them. And like, they're just everything to you. And then at other times you're like, you're literally the dumbest person I've ever met. Like stop. Like you get so mad at everyone, but you also just get so invested. It's just wild. I don't know how she does it, but I love this book. I, like I said, it was very different starting out, just like getting inside of Daisy's head. She is a doctor in this story. Like she is in medical school, which is obviously another thing that's very different from Magnolia. Like she isn't doing anything like that. So Daisy like is very smart and you know, she has to be like the doctor for all of these men that she's around all the time that are getting into fights and getting themselves shot. And she's like doing surgery on them in their house. And yeah, she's just a complete badass. It's really funny when we see Daisy, the couple of times that we see her in Magnolia Parks, she honestly comes off as like a total bitch, which is so funny. Like that's why it's so cool to now see her perspective because those scenes that happen in Magnolia Parks happen again in this book. And so you go into this thinking one thing and the same thing with Christian. Like we see Christian in Magnolia Parks, but like every time we see him with Daisy and we kind of hear about what's going on with him and Daisy, like you have this picture in your mind, but then seeing the other side of the story and actually seeing it happen and seeing Christian go between these two friend groups and you know, say one thing about Daisy, say one thing about how he feels about Daisy to his friends, but then actually get to see them interact and then see inside of his brain of like the struggle he's going through of like being in love with Magnolia, but she's in love with BJ and he can't have her even though she loved him at one point when they were younger, but now the time has passed and it's like killed him ever since that he missed his chance with her and like she's never gonna love anyone like she loves BJ. But then he's over here having his like friends with benefits thing with Daisy and like, yeah, he's very attracted to her and thinks that she's great, but like, 
he can't have a relationship with her because he loves Magnolia and they don't do jealous like they have rules like they don't do jealous and they don't fight they just everything with them is casual you know because that always works out in every story ever the friends with benefits like no strings attached thing is always foolproof as we know but um yeah, it's so funny because like in this story, you know, we we know you can tell that Christian has a thing for Magnolia You can tell he's into her and then we see the big like blow-up scene in Magnolia parks where um, you know It seems like he Daisy doesn't really like Magnolia You can tell that you can see the scene whenever she has to like sit down at lunch with Magnolia and her sister how she's like I don't want to be here. Let's go and you think like why is Christian following around this like bitchy girl? Like what is her story? But now knowing seeing from her perspective that even though she comes off as like a total bitch and like she doesn't want to love anyone and she doesn't have time for anybody to be in her life that you know she cares about because she's constantly in danger and that's just a distraction she doesn't need the baddest bitches at their core have the softest hearts and like i've always said that and her heart is freaking beating for christian like she as much as she doesn't want to, she is like in love with this boy. And so it obviously like eats her up inside that he obviously has a thing for Magnolia, but she won't let it show because she is a bad bitch. So she's like, whatever, it's fine. Like we don't do jealous. I don't like him, like won't admit it. And it's so fun to see her feeling that way. And then also seeing Christian feeling that way, like kind of have the same vibes as like a fake dating trope book where it's like, will we or won't we? Like we're not really together, but like, why do I feel this way? But you know, they're in this like, friends with benefits situation like it was just it was so good they're back and forth like the fighting between them again it's like it was so much like magnolia parks because her relationship with bj like the back and forth like it was so painful and annoying to watch but also just like you couldn't look away it was like a car crash like you knew they probably weren't good for each other probably shouldn't be together but also like you wanted it more than anything at the same time and that's the way i felt in this book as well like christian I was so pissed at him by the end of this book like going into this book knowing that at the end of magnolia parks he like goes to magnolia and like confesses his love and like kisses her and all this stuff the entire time i'm reading this book and he's like falling in love with daisy despite not wanting to fall in love with her i'm like mad at him about it because i'm like i know by the end that you just like like magnolia and you're not gonna be with her but then actually getting to read it and see what happens and see the other side of the story and again see inside his head and like see the closure that he gets with the whole thing and like finally coming to terms with him loving Daisy. Like it just made my heart explode. Like I really didn't think I liked Christian that much. I mean, he's kind of the only character in a lot of ways that makes any type of sense in this story that has any type of brain in his head. Like he's the only one that will call out Magnolia and be like, what is wrong with you? Like you are kind of a bitch. Like you kind of are very fine with stringing along 10 men at once, like letting all of them love you when you know there will never be anybody but BJ. Like, I just wanna like cheer for him in the background and be like, yes, Christian, like go tell her. Cause she's like so quick to get hurt, right? And I'm not like here to hate on Magnolia. Like I honestly really like her. Cause again, like I hate everyone, but I also love everyone in this story so much. I love her so much, but like, I can't deny, you know, she's toxic. She's not a great person. Like she's very willing to have the entire city of london at her feet when she has like no intention of loving any of them back which is kind of like not very nice of her kind of a shitty quality and i love that christian will call that out and he's like the person to say like you know and she gets her feelings so hurt if anyone actually calls it out like she's like so quick to cry and her little like she gets a little puppy dog face and he's like don't care get over it and i'm like yes sir that's the teeth i'm with you um but yeah we need to talk about julian because that man might be my favorite character in this series. I literally can't decide because I kind of love everyone. Ugh, Tom England though. Tom England in this story, I'm going off the rails. I love Tom. Tom is everything. But Julian, I was so intrigued by at the end of Magnolia Parks. Like he came up just briefly and we learned that, you know, Magnolia after BJ cheated on her, like her and Julian kind of had like one night together where she thought she was going to hook up with him to like get her mind off BJ. But then she ended up just like crying and like they like snuggled and watched a movie and like ate ice cream or whatever. And it's so funny now meeting Julian and realizing like how hardcore of like a badass he is and how he like uh, kills people on a daily basis. But he's like letting Magnolia like sit in his bed and cry and eat ice cream. Like that is so 
sweet to me like we all love the like mafia man in the story that's like got a soft spot and like is actually a really nice person and so like his whole thing with magnolia i was so intrigued by it and like the devil's advocate in me is like julian and magnolia like i'm kind of here for it like don't get me wrong the bj situation i know that those two are soulmates like the way they talk about each other literally had me like in a puddle on the floor like i'm obsessed with them even though they're awful for one another but julian and magnolia is something that intrigues me and we see more of that in this book and jessa was a hasty little snake about that because we have like text conversations throughout this story because she did that in the first book as well and i love that and i think it's so funny because like you see the chapters from certain people's perspective but then she'll just put a text conversation at the end that isn't necessarily from that person's perspective you kind of have to like read it and figure out the context to figure out like who is talking to who and what they're saying and whatever um but it's usually pretty easy but within the story there's like a text conversation going on where it just has like a phone number at the top so you don't know like who is even talking to who but you catch on pretty quickly and I figured out pretty quickly that it was obviously Julian talking to Magnolia and it just happened a couple of times but it's like why is he randomly reaching out to Magnolia on like certain nights and like certain times it'll be like when they were at a club and like a shooting happened or whatever and he's like just checking on Magnolia to see that she's okay which like I guess a normal human being would do but like they're not close like they do not hang out on a regular basis like they do not run in the same crowd so like this like little soft spot that julian has for magnolia is like making my heart explode and like part of me kind of wants it like i don't think she would be hinting at it and throwing it in here for no reason like i kind of think that they're gonna have a little rendezvous at some point and i would be so here for it like i don't know i just love julian i was so obsessed with him and i was so excited to see that we were going to get his perspective in this book like i just kind of figured it was going to be i hadn't really thought about it honestly like because i felt like the whole christian daisy thing was kind of like resolved in this story i thought maybe it was just going to be from her perspective i definitely did not have any idea that it was going to be from julian's and that was kind of fun how the book was from the three perspectives like I don't know it was just interesting how it was like the two kind of main people within the couple and then julian and then daisy has so many other random suitors like you have romeo her like childhood lover that has been through all these things with her and that they've literally almost gotten killed together multiple times and then you have oh my god the devil's advocate in me is coming back once again because we need to talk about tiller freaking the like policeman detective fbi agent whatever the heck he was that would constantly show up to their house to check in on them because he is like in charge of basically just like keeping julian and this entire like hates family situation in check um that he just like they are literally on a first name basis at this point like he just like comes to their house every single day and is like what are you guys up to what is going on like what are you doing and the way that daisy is like so flirtatious with him and is like hi officer tiller how's it going like their whole banter and relationship when she is like literally a part of this criminal family that he is like trying to take down but she's just like over here flirting with him and he is definitely like shamelessly flirting back i was obsessed with him i was obsessed and by the end whenever he like they were working together and he was like trusting her and lines were being crossed and boundaries were being crossed i was like please i kind of need this to happen i mean daisy and christian's relationship i was very much here for and i feel like that's gonna be in game but like i don't know i really wouldn't mind a tiller and daisy moment i don't know that is what is so funny about this series like i am usually so hardcore passionate about what team i'm on like what couples that i want what characters that i love which characters that i hate but like with this series it is just one big blurry gray area it's like in one way or another i would kind of be fine with like every couple being together like anybody being with anybody like i would find joy in it like anything happening any character at any given point i can love or i can hate like everything in between i feel like if magnolia ended up with literally like yes bj seems like in game but like i said her and tom england loved it they were so sweet they were so cute tom was everything if she ended up with christian like that would be spicy and scandalous and i'd be like oh my god here for it if she ended up with freaking julian oh my god julian i think julian might be my favorite but like i don't know literally if any of those happened i think i would be satisfied and i think i would be happy and i would also be heartbroken that the other people didn't get her and that's how i feel about everything else like daisy with christian yes daisy with romeo i don't really care about to be honest like 
I get their whole like childhood trauma bond, but something about him just like icks me out a little bit and I don't like it. Like him and her kind of have the same BJ Magnolia situation where it's like, it's always been you, like we're always gonna run back to each other. And I felt like that's what it was kind of trying to mirror, but it, it just wasn't the same. I didn't feel the same about it. I didn't feel the same sort of passion there. It almost felt like a forced passion. Like we've been through so much so we have to be together and like yes i'm attracted to you so like i'm always going to care about you and i get that but like to me them together is not something that i care for whatsoever so scratch that um that's the only couple i would be a little bit pissed about but you know what miss jessa would probably find a way to make me okay with it is what i'm trying to say um but then her and tiller yes even at the point in the story when she like hooked up with declan for no reason i was like hot like <laughs> So good I'm just like eating it up I'm literally eating this freaking series up with a fork and knife at what I don't know I just I can't even form thoughts that's how obsessed I am with it and I feel like this entire video has just been like a complete ramble that makes no sense but um yeah the end of this story ripped my heart out just a little bit with the whole situation with Julian how he obviously like crossed a line and broke a rule and like kidnapped those children Sorry, I'm just trying to think about if somebody is watching this and hasn't read this book at all and is like, forget it, I'm just gonna watch it, I don't care. You're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, what is going on? Because that is what this series is like. There is so much to it and so much happening. Um, you're like, high society London, like going to clubs, like hanging out at Gucci, having tea, but also like people are kidnapping children and there's like an art heist in the middle of it and like people are getting shot. Um, yeah yeah that's what <laughs> that's what this series is um but yeah so whenever julian like took the children crossed one of daisy's lines and she had to like team up with tiller get the children back and they like essentially broke up as siblings and she's like i don't ever want to speak to you again don't talk to me i hate you that freaking hurt me because daisy and julian's relationship is obviously so sacred and so special like brother and sister they've been through so much he essentially raised her like y'all can never be apart from one another like that that broke my heart and I feel like they'll find their way back to each other but she wants to go off and live a normal life whatever that means and she wanted Christian to come with her but he's too deep in it and he can't just like drop everything and go so um it was kind of left with Christian saying like him and Daisy went their separate ways and that they didn't speak for 10 months so I'm very interested where this book left us because Magnolia has fled to New York because, and we learned that in the series that, you know, after the aftermath with the whole BJ thing and figuring out that the person he cheated on her with was her bestest friend. Um, my jaw literally hit the floor and I'm still recovering from that. But her just like moving to New York and living in Manhattan and then her be trying to be with Tom, but then Tom being like, it's always gonna be BJ. Like that whole little tidbit that just got thrown in at the end of the story, like I was not prepared for it. I was like, oh my God. And it definitely ended on very much of a cliffhanger. Like, okay, this story is far from over. So I have no idea where we're going next because I don't know where Daisy went. I don't know, like obviously people's paths are gonna cross again, but I am so curious, bro, for what is gonna happen in this book. I have my little bookmark in there, but I haven't started it yet. Cause the next book in the series is again, Magnolia Parks, but it's The Long Way Home. So it, this will obviously focus more on Magnolia again, but I'm like, okay, but where does Daisy play into this now? Like, is she gonna come in? Like, where's Christian gonna be? Like, the story's gonna start with her being in New York, but obviously like BJ's gonna come back into this at some point. I don't know and I'm just gonna go into it totally blind because I feel like that is the best way to do this like I had no idea what Magnolia Parks was going in literally no idea whatsoever like I I don't know I I feel like I had heard it was like Gossip Girl-esque but that's all I knew and so going into it blind was like the greatest experience and again with Daisy I didn't even know someone told me right before I started it that it happened during the same timeline as Magnolia but that is all I knew and so this book, I have not a damn clue. So I cannot wait to jump into it, but I'm seriously gonna make myself wait just a little bit. I think I'm gonna just wait until December, which is only like a week or two away. I just wanna pace myself because I'm afraid if I read this entire series too fast, like I'm just going to have a gaping hole in my chest. Like I think I'm just gonna be in like the worst reading slump of my life. So I'm trying not to make that happen. So I think if I pace myself a little bit, it won't be as bad, but I know it's it's still gonna be bad. But yeah, overall, 
these were really freaking good. Oh, one thing I wanted to talk about because, okay, I feel like this is gonna have very mixed reviews and opinions from people, but one thing that was different about this book and the way that it was written was when we got to Daisy's perspective, Miss Jessa um, did this thing where she did footnotes. So like within the story, it would, like she would say something and there would be like a little number next to it. And so it's like, she's saying things, but then you go down to the footnote and it's like her adding additional thoughts to the things she's saying. And the first few pages that she did that, I, I thought it was so cool and so quirky. And it was so funny because like she would say, it would be like the intrusive thoughts or something, right? Or it would be like, the devil on her shoulder being like, yeah, actually that's not what you think. Like she would, within her like head and then within this book be like, oh yeah, like Romeo's here and I'm not even paying attention to him. And then the footnote would be like, I'm very much paying attention to him. So it was funny, it was cute, it was quirky, it was very different. I've never seen that in a book before. So when it started, I really liked it, but I'm gonna be honest by like 50 pages in, I got like a little bit sick of it just because like, it was just a little annoying for me to have to like jump down because you want to read it like within the story so it's like you see the footnote you have to jump down you have to read the footnote you have to go back and find your place like where you were and certain pages there'd be like 10 footnotes on it and so it just felt like it took a really long time to get through daisy's chapters and sometimes the footnotes like i just didn't care about and like i i could kind of figure out like at certain points when i wouldn't want to go down because she would say that someone was like holding like a type of gun and then it would be like a two line description of like what this gun is like I don't care or like art pieces like she'd be like I'm looking at the lady in the lake and then it would be like created in France 1842 blah, 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 blah. like I don't I don't care so like there were times like that where I just found them to be annoying I'm like I don't need like literal footnote citations like again it was still quirky and cute but I did find myself about halfway through this book getting to a point where when Daisy's chapters came up because she only did that in Daisy's chapters I was kind of like uh, dreading them a little bit just because I found the footnotes annoying. But I do think it very much like speaks to Daisy's character and I think it was very intentional because I think it just shows you that she tries to act like she's one way. She tries to portray herself as a certain type of way. Like again, like she's a bad bitch and she doesn't care and she doesn't have any feelings and like she doesn't need anyone in her life where like the footnotes are her brain, you know, setting putting her in check being like uh yeah actually you do actually you do have emotions actually you do have feelings for this man stop trying to play yourself so i totally get the purpose of it but i just think for the sake of like you know the experience of reading i got to be a little tired of it after a while but i don't know i would love to know what you guys think of it it didn't like make or break the book for me but just an interesting thing i felt like i had to mention but yeah i i mean both of these books were like the hardest five stars i've ever given in my life like hardest is in like hardcore like hardcore five stars like no question about it um i i liked magnolia parks more i will say that i mean they were very different um definitely like by the end i was still just as mind blown by daisy obsessed with it like liked the process liked everything about it but i just think i like magnolia's story a little bit more it's a little more fun you know it's not as like scary and dangerous and like traumatic and awful in the way that the story is but thoroughly enjoyed them both i'm really excited to see the two kind of merge together which i assume is going to happen like i feel like at some point in this story you know they've kind of lived separate lives daisy's over here magnolia's over here they cross paths every once in a while i feel like as we get deeper into the series like the two will kind of intertwine more and i'm very excited to see that happen but I am so freaking excited to just straight up get back to Magnolia and BJ because I miss them so much and I'm excited to see the crazy aftermath of everything that has happened so far and um, I, I want to know what the next book is going to be like I'm going to get through this first before I let myself really think about that but um, I've been following Jessa Hastings I haven't followed her Magnolia Parks universe Instagram yet just because like I'm afraid of any spoilers or anything being posted like I don't know anything about the series and I feel so bad because I know a handful of people that have messaged me saying that um, the first book got spoiled for them that they knew the ending and they know what happened and that sucks because seriously going through the motions of this book was just everything like the experience was so good so I would hate to have anything spoiled for me because I don't know a damn thing so that's why I haven't followed her Magnolia Parks universe but I've been like peeping in on her personal Instagram whatever you don't need all this information I just know she's been teasing the fourth book and she posted yesterday that like she posted the three books together and then she posted a white book that said coming soon with like green lettering so I think the next book is going to be green which 
is my favorite color and it's I just know it's gonna be stunning and beautiful and I don't know if the next book is a Daisy Hates book I kind of assume because it went Magnolia Daisy Magnolia so is the next one Daisy or is it just something else entirely like maybe it's a whole new character what if it's Julian Hates I swear to god oh my god Tom England <laughs> I don't know I feel like it could be anything at this point and I will eat it up regardless I have no idea how long this series is supposed to be I don't know if Jessa has it all planned out like Literally give me 10 books. I'm telling you I would read every single one 100% it's everything to me, but yeah guys that was this very hectic chaotic video um, If you read Daisy hates which I sincerely hope that you did if you've watched this far I would love to hear your thoughts down below tell me if you liked it better than Magnolia or vice versa um, Don't tell me anything about the next book. I swear. I'll be so mad at you, but um yeah, just just tell me if you're excited for the new book for the next book that's coming literally anything you want to say I am here to hear it. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you very soon Bye